morning, everybody. And thank you for coming back on the second day as well. And I'm Anish, and I'm from the marketing team, as I introduced yesterday. So from my perspective, how Deludes help me it's like, you know, previously when I go to Amazon.com and try to make an order, let's say I, you know, add the things that I want, maybe a shoes, uh, a pair of bags, wallet, anything. Amazon does this cool thing of, like, calculating the price automatically. I don't know what's happening. So I just entered the quantity and the things that I want to purchase. And the price automatically comes up. And when I want to select a particular payment, it will automatically show my preferred payment method. So how does all this happen? So I know that at some point in some country, a programmer or a coder is going to do the backend and do all this magic for me. You know, myself a non-programmer, I don't know how to do this. Right? So how Deluge helps me or any other non-programmer is like doing all this cool stuff ourself, doing all this magic ourselves. So today we will take an example where a pizza store is trying to automate their order management. So there would be a customer facing form where the customers can place the orders for the pizza and at, at the back end the pizza store guys would see the orders and also they can maintain their inventory. So this is the scenario which we are going to take today. So just like yesterday, we will be downloading a few files. So this is the first URL which we are going to use. I'll just walk you through. So dot two slash creator workshop two zero one six. So dot two slash creator. Order two slash creator workshop two thousand sixteen. You will be in this page. Go to this particular folder, day two. There is a zip file there. Pizza ordering app dot zip. Have you all reached here? Okay. Need any help? Ah, okay. Go to this URL. There would be two folders day one and day two. Day one is the folder which we used yesterday. Today it's the day two, so go to day two folder. There would be a file, a zip file, pizza ordering dot zip. The first URL over here, zo dot two slash creator workshop two thousand sixteen. Can we go ahead and download the file? The particular URL, there will be two folders which I already showed you, day one and day two. Under day two, there is this file, pizza ordering dot zip. Everybody able to see that? Anybody needs help? Okay, I take it as an yes. And let's go and download it.
on the right bottom there is an icon here the download icon click on that it would be downloaded in your computer unzip it the downloaded file would be in a zip format unzip it so that you will have file like this is our ordering app the folder have we all reached up to this stage where we have the folder yes yeah okay so let's uh, go inside the folder and there would be three files here info inventory report.xls types of types of report types of pizza report.xl and there is one thing called so there are three files here inventory report pizza order.es and types of pizza.xls let me talk about that uh, pizza order.ds file for some time yesterday evening uh, when we completed building the visitor management application vivek was explaining you like how every application that will will be built in creator is like a bunch of code and that code we can export as a .ds file so every application can be exported as a .ds file and it can be used in any other account that you have so once you build an application it can be downloaded as a ds file so today since we are going to cover a lot of ground we cannot uh, build an application from scratch like we did from yesterday like you know building the form everything and like adding the fields everything. so what we have done is we have provided a shortcut we have made an app like you know partially completed app and made it as a ds file today we will do what we will do is we will all import this ds file into the account which will create an application an order management application in each one of your account and on top of that particular application we will add more functionality using dilute script this is the idea So just like yesterday, uh, let's make sure that you know, all of us are in the old UI. If any of you have the new UI enabled, can the volunteers check? Jay, check on that side. Can you, can you show the new UI as such so that people can understand what okay. is new UI, what is old UI? Okay. Third one, next one, next one, yeah. So this is the application which we built yesterday. I'm just going to demonstrate the new UI. No, today, old. Uh, I mean, uh, let's get into create application instead of this. Get into home page. I'll do it. So, uh, everyone get to like creator.zo.com. So who are all use getting this particular interface? The particular UI. So this screen. So please raise your hands. Okay, just two, three, four. Okay? And few others will be having this screen. Right? Rest of them are having this screen, right? 
So we're going to show on both the screens. Am I audible? Right. Okay. Uh, this is the newer one which we are working on now. So most of them will get it very soon. So we haven't opened to everyone. The few places and few users are getting this UI. And few users will use this. So similarly, when you click on an application, you'll get the old one. And few people, when they click on the application, say for example, this is the new one. When you click on this, okay. So again, the four or five people will be getting this, right? This application when they access it, and few people will get this, right? Don't worry about it. The guys who are having this interface are in the latest one. We are moving everyone to this new one, right? We don't want to force everyone to move it. So we'll be uh, providing an option to everyone in the old one to move to this shortly. Question? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. So what I'm going to say here is it's better everyone stick to one UI so that everyone follows the same. So the guys who are in the new UI can click here on the username. That is something called switch to old version. Click on that. So make sure everyone click on this. You'll get something like this. Right, some application, say for example, something like this. Right, make sure everyone has this UI. Right, again, if you want to switch back, you can click on try new version. Yep. Wi Fi is slow, okay. So make sure everyone switch to old one. And then we'll proceed. Yes, yeah, so we're having just some Wi-Fi issues again. Um, if you uh, are from the West Coast or I guess anywhere that knows what Comcast is, um, then you you know what can that can be a pain. Um, so yeah, I I, rec I recommended it yesterday. I recommend it again if you're using multiple devices. Uh, go down to one device, just the main one you're using for the Wi-Fi. Uh, if you have any automatic updates running, um, you might want to, you know, just turn those off. Um, in, unless you're, you know, you might be accidentally downloading a bunch of stuff, which might be slowing things down a bit. Uh, between this room and the other room, you know, we probably have, I'm guessing, close to 400 devices on our network right now. So uh, it's best to try to just power down. Is it just slow right now, or is everyone down? Or is it working? Just really slow? Cool. So at the very least, for now, um, even if it's going slowly, Anish can still do some stuff. Um, we have a really tiny little backup AV network that we just have. Uh, like an AirPlay essential or Airport Express doing. So it's it's not really suitable for everyone to get on. Um, but we can still lead you through some stuff um, and show you some things. Hopefully it'll it'll kick back on. So uh, so what what is what we are gonna do on day three, right? So it's all about the new interface. Right? Everyone has moving towards a new interface. The people here are like 90% are using the newer one. The people who are in the developer track or the older ones are using the old interface because they have been in the product for more than like a year or two. They're still in the old interface. They don't want to switch to the new interface, which I feel like <laughs> could be like they will move very soon. Uh, do you like the newer one or the older one? Okay. So 
for the for the world ones yeah we will be sending a notification tomorrow we are announcing it officially where we'll provide access to everyone where everyone can try it out and then share their feedback what happens here is it just applies that for your account alone where if you want say for example you share that application with multiple people they will not get the new one so unless you'll say you want to share that application to everyone with the new interface you're going to stick with the older one alone right that will be the behavior for the people who are already in the new one they will continue to use it with the newer one alone right there are two things here the home page so the screen which you are seeing here will be migrating everyone to this so we don't want to show multiple options here this we are working out we are doing in you know, a simple uh, research here where people can use it pretty easier than the older one here so we are moving people to this new one you cannot switch back to the older one for this so you're going to stick with the new one on this uh we'll be kick starting on that so how's the wifi going is it is it fine everyone in the screen now show of hands if it's if it's improving yep if it is staying the same okay <laughs> so it gets started so the people who are in the screen just follow me on this and then i will show them the older one as well so when you hover this there is something called import file click on that you get something like this so make sure everyone has this i'm going to talk about the older guy, older ones later this is the new one for now so everyone on this page no 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 i'll i'll talk about the older one later so you stick with that so people who can see the screen continue with the screen we'll talk about the new older ones later as a number is less for now when you click on click here to choose there is something called from your computer click on that and choose the dot ds file right is everyone here So everyone get back to the home page. I think most of you are in the visitors app now because we saw switching between the like. So everyone get to the home page that is creator.zor.com. Yes. So you can see the option to create a new application. I'll do it again. over this there is something called import a file click on that you'll get something like this where you can drag and drop the files inside or choose a file to import click on from computer so when you click here you'll get a menu like this where you can click on from computer or like from cloud right now you download it on your computer so we're going to click on from computer so choose a file which is pizza order dot ds and click open it will you will see something like importing is everyone getting this yeah team you learn the world one as well Hey. It takes some time. We're all facing the Wi-Fi problem here. It'll be it will be fine very soon. So the app is ready, right? What we did here is imported the DS file, and the application has created automatically. So we'll be helping the new ones here. So once you are here, make sure you click the bottom left, click here, and switch to old version. Make sure everyone in the older version, so that will stick to one 
question so that we'll move on the guys in the floor can help you on that make sure everyone go to the world of question so for the people who are in the world version we're going to show how to import the file so i believe like there are four or five people who already did that as well so import a file click on browse so click on open and then create okay so we'll wait for another three to four minutes and make sure everyone on this page so anish is going to start on this from this particular page make sure everyone on this page Is it good to go? Yep. Anish. DJ, do you need? Yeah. Saran, can you help me? If anybody needs help, please raise your hand so we can come and assist you. This is the first and important step, like you know, where we import the pre built application. So we need this for any further steps to be taken properly. So please uh, raise your hands if you need help in importing this DS file. Can we go ahead? Next step. Okay. So right now we have created the basic application, uh, but we don't have any data in this application to work with. So as you can see, there are three sections here. The orders is the first section. There is a section called inventory. There is a section called types of pizza. Okay. What we are going to do is like, you know, add some data to this application. First type, which we, will, we are going to do is, like, you know, import some data from the types of pizza. Okay. So, of the three sections that you can see, orders, inventory, and types of pizza, go to the types of pizza section. There you will see two things, types of pizza and types of pizza report. Click on Types of Pizza Report. You will see an almost blank screen, blank screen like this. Three sections, orders, inventory, and types of pizza. Let's go to types of pizza and then to types of pizza report. Now let's take the next step, which is to import an XLS file. It's already on your computer when you downloaded that file. It's already there on the computer. So let's go to the settings button over here. You can see the gear shaped icon here. Click on that. 
and you will have multiple options coming along. The import data over here. The gear icon, then you have import data over here. Click on that. The same steps which we did yesterday. While you are importing the data, choose the file type. Here it's going to be the Excel file. So I have that here. Click on choose the file. In that downloaded folder, I'll have something named types of pizza report. Types of pizza report. I chose that particular file. Click on next. This is the second step. Have you all reached up till here? Okay, yeah. that's a big yes, thank you. So let's go into on importer is at the bottom over here. Okay. Let's select the option don't import the data. This is to make sure that if there are any others, you don't want to import the wrong data over here. So just make sure that don't import the data. And click on import data. So this is the third step which will let you know where our import has been successful or not. You can see the form name, types of pizza, total record 6, success count 6. There are no failures. So we are all good. Yep. So we see all the 6 types of pizza imported into this application. Can can we can we move ahead or does anybody need help in importing? Please raise your hands. One of us can, can come and help you. Okay, I think we are good. Now we have completed types of visa. Let's go to the inventory section. Then move on to inventory report. Under the section inventory, there is an inventory report. Click on that and you will have this empty screen over there. And again, you can see the settings button over here. It's like a gear shaped button. Okay. Click on that and you will see the option import data. I select the particular file type, which is the Excel. It's already there. I'm going to the choose. I'm going to choose the file which I'm going to import. 
which would be the inventory report dot xls. on that and I go to the next step of import where I try to match the fields but creator has already recognized all the fields and matched it with the columns in the excel file so I don't have to do anything else just one small setting here what should I do if there are any imports please go and change it to don't import the data Good. <laughs> oh, import the data. Again, the third step tells me whether the import was successful or not. I can see total records, success count is 17, and failure count now. So we are safe. So this is the imported data. We imported an Excel file. And right now, we have that inside our application. And now we have the inventory report. Do we need more time on import or are we all good? Okay, fine. Thank you. So now we have our application, you know, almost ready. We imported it, added some data. So let's try to understand this application as such. So this is an application maintained by a pizza store. So what are the typical things that they need? They need to keep a track of the types of pizza that they sell. It's with which they do with this report. So at any time, if they think like, you know, we need to add more types of pizza, we need to have more variety, they will go to this form and make a new entry. Let's say the new pizza is like pizza X. I can add the name here and it will report. Okay. So this pizza store will only sell six types of pizza which are listed here. Now, what's the next step? The pizza store also, also needs to keep a track of how many pizzas they are storing in each of this type. That would be maintained in the inventory report. So that's why we have this section here and the inventory report. So at any point of time, how many pizzas, at what price do I have in the store? And only those are available for sale. We good? This is the inventory form where, we'll, where we can add more details to the inventory report if we want to add more changes or anything. The interesting field here is the lookup field. So there is a field called pizza here. The field name, label name is pizza. This is looking into the types of pizza. It's an important thing to understand. So the types of pizza, which is linked to the lookup field here. I'm just trying to explain you this application and familiarize you with this application. So when we think of uh, two set of people here, like there are customers and the pizza store owners. So the 
Sections, inventory and types of visa are typically for the pizza store owners. Whereas, the section orders, there are two things. One is the order form and the order report. The order form is for the customers. Let's say the pizza store has a website. They embed this form in the website and the customers can come online and make the orders. Once they make all the orders, or different orders, all the orders in a particular day or a time period will be listed in this order report. This is for the store owner. A customer doesn't need to see all the order reports. Okay. So that's about the application. So let's just get started with our session for today. Okay. In this section, uh, there would be almost five, six tasks. So I'd be covering four tasks, you know, the automation section, how we can add automation to forms using Telus script. So the first exercise, the task one, is we'll be trying to set order date field with today's date. So let's just understand what that means. Now when a customer comes to the website and tries to make the order, isn't it very good if we can pre-fill this particular field with today's date? Because that's already known. Customer doesn't have to enter the data. We know today's date, we can fill it ourselves. So this is one of the magical things that we can do as non-programmers. So we will do that as the first task. The task two. Now let's say the customer enters the types of the pizza. Okay, and for each pizza there are different sizes. It's like regular, large, small, medium, and large. Once he enters the data. We want to display the price automatically. Okay. The second good thing that we can do. Again, the third task. Calculate and display the total price when the customer enters the quantity of pizza that he needs. Now he has chosen the pizza he needs, the size, where we automatically calculated the price. Then he enters the quantity. I need two pizzas, or I need three pizzas. We'll be showing the total here again automatically. So these are the three different tasks which we are, we are going to achieve. In addition to this, I'll be also giving some practice exercises, you know, that we will see. So as I was learning Deluge myself and without this programming background, the way I learned is whenever I get a task, like now the task like set order date field with today's date at the form loads. I only know English. I didn't know like Deluge as it. Okay, so what I would do, and I will take you through those steps so that everybody understands that. So why we need to do this? Better user experience, avoid invalid entries. So how did I make the transition from English language to Deluge code? That's what we are going to see. The first would be trying to elaborate the task given to us. So the task was like set order date with today's date. So I just elaborated it. In the order form, when the customer is about to add details about her order, pre-populate the order date field with today's date. Now I am able to see more things into my task. Now I ask the question. So this is what, we, what I kind of say, like, you know, the 4W1H questions to any task. So if, if we say somebody, go get a coffee, we have to ask the questions, where, when, how, what. The same principle we apply here also. So to this task, I keep asking these questions. Where? I'll get the answer. 
or a form. When the customer is about to add details. So once you elaborate the task into you know, proper English and ask these questions, you will be able to structure it properly. Say it's while pre-populate. That means when the customer is about to add, just before that, we have to pre-populate. And what we have to do, this is the task. We have to set order date with today's date. How we will see that? Now, I hope everybody has seen the screen. Uh, this is inside the product when we go under the workflow section. Is there a question? Okay, we're good. Sorry. Okay. So what we are going to try to see is, now we have listed all this, how do we translate this into inside the product, like inside Deluge? So inside the product, there would be a section called Workflow, which you have already seen yesterday and today, you know, the one tab sitting over there. Once you click on that, this is the screen that you're going to see. Now, let's translate that, all the questions here. We had the question, where, where should I do the task? We had the answer, the order form, which would be listed here. Okay. All the forms in a particular application, in this example, we have orders, inventory, types of visa, it would be listed as a drop down. Now we have the answer. Where do we execute this task? You know, in the order form, we pick that. This next question was when? So in, in Deluge and in workflow section, we have two options. One would be the form actions, and next would be the field actions. So Here, let's take a look at when the customer is about to add details. So naturally, we will go to the form actions because customer has not added any details, it's just about to. Now, when you saw that particular screen, the previous screen, you would have seen like on add, on edit, on delete. Let's go back to the previous screen. There is something called on add here. Sorry. There is something called on add here. Then there is something called on edit and something called on delete. So under form actions, where do we do this? Three options. We have answered the question when the customer is about to add data. So let's correlate these two, about the add data and on add. So we come to know that, okay, this is the right section. Okay. Next question was while. Okay, we identified when to do this. Now, while. The answer was pre-populate. When I tried to show you the translation between English to deluge, pre-populate, which means just the moment before entry. So there are two options here. On load, validate, and on success. Under form actions, we have decided like we will be going with form actions in this particular task. And we have three options. What do we mean by on load, on validate, and on success? Anybody has any prior experience to that? We all have seen this happening every day. Maybe we do not recognize it. Okay. So what is this? Typical login screen of Gmail. 
Do we recognize that this is a form? Yeah, I did not for a long time. Until I came to Zoho and started, you know, dealing with forms, I didn't know like this is a form. This is a form with two fields. I have already filled in the username, so it's showing me the other field. What has happened and is like I entered the wrong password and it is showing me email and password you entered don't match. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is for any form there are three stages. The moment when the screen loads, the email says like I'm loading. That's the on load part of any form. Somebody enters the information, the username and password, clicks on submit. There is an invisible part going on, which is the on validate, where they check the information. Okay, with this username and password, does it match? If it doesn't match, if it doesn't you know, pass the validation, it will show this message. Okay, then what do we do? We enter the correct password, click on submit, all successful, we are taken to the inbox. So that particular part is called on success. So for any form, there are three parts or three stages. On load, just before we see all this. On validate, when we click and submit. It will check whether the data entered is correct or not, according to some conditions. The third is success, when we are taken to the inbox. So what do we need here? What should we go with? Would it be on validate? No, on load. Okay. So that, that's a good way to proceed. So we already explained this. Now comes the real task. So when I elaborated the task one, we answered what? The task was, Order date equal to today's date. Now let's see how we can do this. Okay. Now comes how. We want to do this, how to do this. So for any task, when we come into Deluge, we will have all these options. You can see over here, it's written Deluge task. So anything that we want to do, we have to use one of these. It's a list, like you know, if-else, that's one deluge task. Else-if is the second deluge task. Like that, there are a lot of tasks over here. So we need to identify which task to use to identify, uh, so to execute or achieve our goal. Now, our goal is to set order date as today's date. Now let's go through a step-by-step -step process of how to convert that into a deluge task. So what we are doing is basically assigning a value to a variable. The value of today's day to a variable like order date. So uh, just to refresh your memory, variable is like a container and even one of the fields can be con you know, considered as a variable. Order date equal to today's date. Okay. Now you see some change. It was order date, now there is an underscore in between. What is that? So what we see as field names, which is the order date, at the back end for using it in coding, you know, the code layer which we talked about in the previous session, it will add a simple underscore. Because that's how all programming languages understand. They don't accept space. They don't like it. I need something without space. So what we do is add an underscore in between. This is all taken care of. You don't have to do it to yourself. It will be available. Now, on the left, the left hand side, order date, we are all clear on that. Now, how to get today's date? So the 
there are some uh, interesting things that uh, you know, the computer or the software can do by itself without asking the user. That is like storing certain information available from the environment. So what is today's date? Computer can get it, sorry, the software can get it from other sources. So all this information which we don't need to ask the customer directly often, like, you know, what is today's date? So, so the creator will store that information somewhere. Okay, let's say that as in another container. So Zoho maintains a lot of containers where it will use all these environment variables or system variables and keep it there. Okay. Zoho.currentDate is one such variable. And it always will show today's date. What is today's date? Zoho.currentDate will say today's date is 28th. Similarly, there will be other variables which we call as Zoho.variables. And all of them will have all this system information or environment information, which is not an input from the user. Is Zoho variable clear? Okay. So let's say who is the admin of the app? Creator will know that automatically, and it will store it in some variable called Zoho.admin user ID. So if you are the admin, it would be already present there. Every time you don't have to enter it. So are we clear up to till here? We just translated the English to deluge task. Any doubts on this? Yeah, we'll do it. So now there is the request to do it. So let's get into the product now. It's been a long presentation. So I think this is where we last saw the product. So let's get back here. Are we ready? Yeah. I hope everybody are on this old UI, you know, this cream colored, whatever. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, Go and edit this application. We will go into the development environment where we can change the functionality of the app. Okay. All right, shall we? Okay. So this can see here workflow this is the tab where you will write all the things which is deluge okay so let's click on that remember the screen I showed you in one of the slides that we explained the where when what everything okay now the first question was where you can see orders the other forms also would be listed here but we know where, which is the order form. We just pick orders. And now, when? There are two things here, form actions and field action. Now it's more, more related to forms. Is everybody on the same screen? So, OK, that's fine. We can see form actions, and we already did this. We know like we have to use on add instead of on edit or on delete. Okay, and we also came to the while part, which was on load. All good. Okay, now let's get into the real thing. Which task to pick? Uh, which task to pick? Yep, we will go here. We will look for the task called set variable. Scroll up, scroll up, yeah, set variable. There would be different sections like condition, data access, client functions. You will see it under miscellaneous. 
Can we all see the set variable task? Can we on the right side? So we are not going to write anything. Coding is not writing here. We just drag and drop it here. As soon as you drag and drop, a new pop-up will open. So let's reach there. Have we all reached here, this particular pop-up? Okay. So there are a lot of things there, but uh, let's not worry about all those things like, you know, different times. So let's uh, focus on simple things. Okay. Now, uh, what is our task order date equal to Zoho.current date? So first thing, go here. So what is the variable here? Order date. Order date is the variable. Okay. So here we have an option, declare or select variable. Can we see that? Okay. And there is a drop down also. Okay. Click on that and you will see a list coming out from there. Okay. This is just like what we are seeing here. Creator already picks all the fields from that particular form. In this case, it's the order form and lists it here. Oh, let's go and pick the correct field, which is the one we need. It's already here, order date. Can you all see the order date field there? All good? Sounds simple, yeah. Click on that, you can see that. So the first step is over. The left hand side of order date equal to current date is over. Now let's do the right hand side. How to do that zoho.current date. Okay. I explained about Zoho variables. Now what are the different kinds of system information or environmental information that we store? If we go through all these different tabs, we can see something called Zoho variables. Please don't worry about all the other different tabs, just focus on Zoho variables. The other tabs we will explain later in other tasks. Okay. Click on Zoho variables. Can we see that? Okay. So again, different Zoho variables as listed. Zoho.admin user ID will store the information about the app admin. And we come and see Zoho.current date. Under that Zoho variables tab, we will have all the Zoho variables. We look for the thing that we need, which is so about current date. Are we able to see that? Okay, on the left hand side? Yeah, all good. Okay. Just click on that and you will see immediately this section was populated. You might be wondering what's going to happen next. So this Wait for a moment and see. I click on done. You can see a small, small text being added here. Order date equal to zoho.current date. Is this what we wanted to achieve?
Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to explain that. So the gentleman here has uh, correctly pointed out why is there a red asterisk. So we added all good, but never forget to save the script. On the right hand bottom here, there's a save button. Okay, always click on that. Okay, now you see the red asterisk has gone and it has changed into the green button. It's, it says we are safe. Red was like danger you have not saved. Now the green is saying like, okay, you have saved everything fine. So every time you do a script, always check whether you are you're safe, you're green and not red. Exactly. You got that here. Wherever you add the script, it would be you know, shown as green. And if you made any changes without saving, that red asterisk will come. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. So now we have configured it in the development environment. So let's go and see whether it's working. The, the first magic is happening. Click on access this application. Ah, yeah. See that beautiful thing here. Is anyone having any uh, slow loading issues right now? Is it taking a minute? Okay, that's okay, good. <laughs> so I'm just going to project, you know, our first achievement here. We have got order date pre-filled with today's date. Are we all able to reach it till this? Okay. So inspired to do the next task? Yeah, okay. So let's get into that development environment. So just, uh, let's just uh, go through the different deluge tasks that are available. Now we saw six variables. And one interesting thing, you know, which is small and easier to understand is the ones over client functions. You can see hide show. Okay. If you want to hide a particular field on the form, you use this task. When do you use that? Like, you know, yesterday in automation without coding, I showed you one example of like, you know, the business it's a business visit, you want to show a particular field, otherwise you want to hide that. You can achieve the same thing here, using this particular deluge task. Again, when we see that order form, we don't want the customer to you know, tweak the price, right? That means we want it to be disabled for them. How do we achieve that? We can use this particular task, disabled task. So let's uh, try to go to the live mode of the application and understand what other you know, small things that we can do to the application. Click on access this application, go here. Now we have set order date as the current date. We don't want the customer to change that. So we need to keep it disabled for you know, customer. He should not be able to edit it. So that's one field. And again, the price field over here, you want to disable it for the customer. 
nobody wants to, nobody should be tweaking about the price that's our decision again there is a field called total just like price the customer doesn't have to do anything with total so we need to keep it disabled and there's something called order status some customer makes an order the customer doesn't need to know like whether the order status is there or not so we need to hide that field it's only for our information okay we will see it in the report what is the status but the, we need not show it to the customer so we will achieve this small four tasks okay we'll go into the edit this application go into the development environment anything related to scripting we go into workflow click on workflow we reach this page we good shall we so where do we add add this task similarly you know just like we discussed we need to add it while the form is loading okay. just before the customer is about to add so it's the same section where we are going to add it so which one i drag and drop disable under client functions choose enable disable field have we all got this particular window uh -huh. and i have two options here one is the disable and enable click on disable i have to ask one more question which field which field i should disable select the field name order date okay. we will disable more fields you know but right now let's disable order date good click on done and the second delete task is added okay so do you want to try something on your own try disabling the price field and total So does anybody have any questions here about enabling or disabling fields? Oh, sorry. Anybody at all? It's pretty simple, right? Just dragging and dropping over, saying disable, picking the field you want to disable, hitting save, right? Yeah, you have a question? Let's say by accident, how would we remove it once we've got it up there? deleting the script so yeah how would you yeah you have this trash icon here just click on that page. if you want to edit it there is something called yeah, the question was you know instead of disable we accidentally put enable how do we edit it just hover your mouse over this that particular task there is an edit option and there is a delete option you can do whatever you want so one more small task let's hide the order status you don't want to show it to the customer so why don't you try it yourself it would be another simple task is a drag and drop in here hide the order status done
So any questions on this? The hiding and showing of the order status? Same process really, just a different function? Are we able to achieve this? Now we have written five lines of script. When we think about this, uh, there is one more thing that we need to do. The customer is not entering the order status. So when we have it in the report, it would be blank. Nobody made an entry. Okay. So again, what will we do? We will autofill it. How do we do that? Again, use a set variable task. Okay. I, I, I'll just. I'll just demonstrate that and then come back here. Click on access this application. Let's make an entry here. Are we all on the same page? Okay. So let's make an entry. Once you made an entry, let's go to order report. See, order status is empty. This is not what we want. The order status should be set as open. Right? So that when the pizza store guys complete that order, he can change the status. Okay. So again, we can autofill it the same way we did it for the order date. Okay. Are you able to relate to it? So let's go into development mode again by clicking on edit this application. Okay. Click on, on the left hand pane, you can see workflow. Check that you are on the orders form here. on add, on load. Which task should we use? It's the same thing that we use in order date equal to zero.current date, which is the set variable task. And drag and drop it there. New pop has opened. I select the left hand side of the expression, which would be order status. Look for order status, yeah, it's here. What is the value? Previous time, we showed you like how to use its OHO variable. Now we know what we want to fill it in, which is the word open. What is the data type of open? It's going to be a string. Just type it open. Are we good? Shall I click on done? No confusions on this particular pop-up, I guess. Click on done. And we have the next line of script added. Order status equal to open. Could I explain it further? Uh, is it clear? Does everyone understand what we just did? Does anyone want to explain, just to recap for everyone, what we just did? Anybody at all? I can do it again if you want. Uh -huh. So again, I will delete that particular task. It's gone. Which task should we use? We are going to use 
or put a value into, into a variable. What is the variable here? A order status field. What's the value? We want that word open and to be put there. So first we will select the left hand side of the expression, which is the variable. And drag and drop the set variable task. New pop-up opens where I can fill the left hand side of this expression, which is the field name. Declare or select variable, I click on drop down, I can see all the fields. Yeah, here is the field that I require. Now I go look at the right hand side, where I want to fill the word open. Open is a string and Saran explained in the previous session like you know whenever you say string use double quotes. So I'm using double quotes open. Done. Okay. Take a look at it. There is that red asterisk over there. I should not have that there. I have to save the script. On the right bottom over here, there is a button called Save Script. Always remember to save the script. Okay. Now we have six lines of script. So with that, we conclude the task one. Task one was like you know, sitting order date, with today's date, but we achieved multiple tasks here, you know, small ones. And Taylor says like we should have a break now. So we'll go to the break and come back and start with the task two. Okay. So yeah, so great job everyone. You've made it through the morning again. Well done. Thank Anish for guiding us through that.